Well guys, have I got a pretty fun one for you this trip. So we're out here doing another little survival challenge, but this trip I've got no food, no water, and no shelter. So we're just gonna yeah, spend the overnight here. We're gonna go up into the bush and try and make a little shelter and sleep in that overnight. And then uh, yeah, try and scour the bushland around here, see what we can find in terms of bush tucker. And uh, hopefully find some water as well. Water might be a little bit tricky around here, but we'll see how we go. I think it's gonna be a bloody epic trip. I'm really looking forward to this one. So let's get stuck into it. So we've got this creek flowing into the lake just here. Now this water is still going to be too brackish to drink, but I reckon if we follow that up, we should be able to find some fresh water up into the bush. So we'll do that a bit later. Um, my main priority now is I want to go try and get the shoulder set up because I think that's going to take a bit of time. We'll come back and try and find some water up there. So being summer now, back out in snake season, we just got to be careful around sort of these firewood water courses because this is where you're going to find the red belly black snakes because we're going to hide out here and try and yeah, prey on like frogs and things like that. So definitely got to keep my eyes open this weekend. Man, what an absolute pearl out of a weekend. You don't get much better than this. Although it's starting to get pretty hot now and having no water is definitely an issue. <laughs> Fire out. Now that is an emu footprint. I would love to see one walking around here. And what a beautiful forest. This is a spotted gum bushland and I absolutely love the, the spotted gum forest. You got these beautiful burrowings the spiky plant behind me, very prehistoric looking plant. These gorgeous yeah, spotted gums, which get to like 30 meters in height or something. Very majestic. Lots of open space as well, so I should be able to find a nice little spot to yeah, set up the shelter. And have a look at this bad boy. So for those who don't know, this is a termite mound. This seems to get absolutely massive. It's pretty crazy to think just little ants can create that. I'd love to see like the network of tunnels and stuff inside. I've also heard that, uh, yeah, sort of like with the old disused, like abandoned termite mounds, you can create it like a little bush oven out of it. Yeah, sort of make a little hole in the bottom and knock off the top. You can sort of create like a, an oven, which would be a pretty good way to cook a pizza out in the bush. All right, well, I think I found a pretty decent spot to set up the shelter. It's a little bit tricky in this kind of forest because you've got these massive gums which uh, can drop their limbs and they're just bloody everywhere here. So trying to find a little gap in between the gum trees where there's no dead limbs is proving to be a little bit difficult. But just above here doesn't seem to be anything too bad. Like there was a good spot just there but there's some really big dead branches hanging out over that so I'm not going to camp over there. So I think this spot yeah, might do. Alright so it's a quick little rundown on my gear. So I've got a 18 litre Helicon Tex Bergen backpack and then in this pocket I've got a 1 litre stainless steel water bottle which doesn't have any water in it. In this pocket I've got a bushcraft knife from Core Knife and Tool which I'll leave a link to the gear in the description below if you guys want to check it out. Also a silky gomboy saw. Front pocket, sort of my first aid kit and stuff. So I've got a got some leather gloves because it is snake season. I'm still gonna be stick my hand in some plants, so I'm just gonna be wearing these. Uh, so in case something tries to bite me, I've also got a PLB on my first aid kit. There's nothing in that top pocket. This is just all my camera goodies. So I've got like batteries, a GoPro, and a uh, head torch as well, so I can film at night. So a few bits and pieces like that. I've got a a bug mesh because there's so many mozzies out at the moment and lots of ticks. I actually had two ticks on me yesterday and one of them got into my shoulder really good. I uh, woke up in the middle of the night I had to pull him out. So there's plenty of ticks around. Um, so I just bought this because yeah, there's so many creepy crawlies. So even though I don't have a tarp or anything, I decided just to bring this just in case. Uh, I've also got the zip off portion to my pants and then just a jumper. And that is it. I've also got a little bandana in there as well. So apart from my yeah sleep, um, apart from my clothes and my sort of first aid kit and camera gear, I've only got five items. 
Um, I decided not to bring like a sleeping bag. Uh, it's going to get to probably about, I think like maybe 12 or 13 degrees tonight. So I'm keen to see how I go just sleeping um, yeah, just in a jumper and just trying to make a, um, this little bushcraft mat as well. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. All right, so I just want to make a quick note because I'm sure I'm going to be a few people um, questioning this, but this is actually a state forest and not a national park. Because obviously national parks are protected, so you can't go um, you damage any of the vegetation. But being a state forest, you can sort of utilize um, the dead standing timber and also to the vegetation to an extent. Um, but just be respectful of the bush. Don't come in and trash the joint and start chopping down every living tree because that's just not cool. <laughs> I don't know why people do that, but there's a few idiots out there who seem to feel like the need for it. So just the main thing is just be respectful of the bush and just try and leave the place just as good as you found it. A struggle to find any sort of wide branches. Everything around here is really straight, but uh, there's a big branch that fell off a tree recently just over there, so I went and cut these off it. So they're, they're pretty green, but in the process, oh yeah, broke the tip off my saw, spewing. Man. The leaf litter here is really thick, which just goes to show like the forest service is really not doing their job. Well, I guess it's not their job, but they should be burning this more regularly. It's probably hasn't been burnt for 10 years or so. And so the next bushfire that comes through here is just going to engulf the canopy and just destroy this, these beautiful trees. They should be burning this every couple of years to sort of keep this leaf litter um, to a minimum and also encourage new growth like grasses and things like that. Very disappointing to see. This is how the this is why the fires back in 2020 were so bad, because well, most of the bush along the coast was like this. We can do better. We need to do better. Man, that was a lot of work. Probably only shows about like a few minutes worth of footage, but that took a fair few hours, eh? I'm buggered and getting uh, very thirsty. So at least I've got the shoulder set up now. It's looking pretty cool. Um, so I'm just gonna go collect some fronds, just to line the back of it, and then we'll go yeah, grab some water. All right, so for the backing of the shelter, I'm just gonna use the leaves from the burrowing, because in this area, there are literally hundreds of burrowings. So if I just take a, a couple of leaves from each plant, that way I'm sort of minimizing my impact on a particular plant and sort of spreading it over a larger area. And it's basically just getting a little prune. So it's not doing any damage, um, but yeah, it's always good not to focus on one plant and try and spread it out over yeah, multiple plants. You gotta be careful with burrowings because they are insanely spiky. That's why I've got the gloves on. A very prehistoric plant.
well, there you go. Not too bad. It's probably not 100% watertight, but it'll definitely do the job for tonight. Alright, let's test her out. <laughs> oh man, this is so rad. If I was going to build like a more of a permanent shelter setup, I'd definitely make it a bit taller and be a bit, bit bigger. But for a quick overnighter, or like a little survival shelter, this definitely does the job. So in Australia, uh, we call this kind of shelter a gunya. Or in WA, I think they call them a humpy. But on the East Coast, they're called gunyas. And that's the Aboriginal name for a shelter like this. Very keen to see how it goes tonight. Um, but I think now we should probably try and get some bedding sorted. So I might go down here around the lake edge and see if I can get some reeds or some grasses or something. We'll try and get a, a little bed going and try and get away from these creepy crawlies because there are plenty of them. Man, I am so parched. I really need some water. So I'm just going to make my way down to this little creek that we saw before and uh, see if we can find some fresh water there. And while I'm down here, I'll see if I can collect some reeds or something to take back to make the bed. All right, so just back at the creek now. And I think this is where the sort of brackish water kind of meets the fresh because you've got a little bit of a sort of rise in the land here. I definitely don't want to try that out. That looks absolute feral. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that from this point onwards, it should be fresh water. I can't see any um, water around here, so we'll just follow the creek up a bit and fingers crossed we can come across some. All right, well, we're starting to get a little bit more water around here. Now, I really got to keep an eye out for snakes because this is prime red belly territory. Oh yeah, we might be on here. Oh, a few kangaroos just in there. Kangaroos are a yowie. <laughs> Yeah, nice. This water looks pretty good. Very nice. There we go. There's a red belly just there. Wow, he's a, he's a big boy. If you guys can see that. Hopefully he buggers off. Because I really want that water. It's right next to the water. I knew I was bound to come across one in here. There's probably plenty others. Oh, look at him go. You keep your distance and I'll keep mine. Wow, look at that. So there's two eels down there. I think I saw a third one as well. Now, I can't catch them because they're under the legal length. They're only small guys, but yeah, pretty cool to see. There's definitely a lot of wildlife around this water hole. Oh, that is slippery. Just trying to keep an eye out for snakes. It's so hard to spot because they just blend in with the, the scrub and just get all the little nooks and crannies. Well, it's just pretty uh, stained from the tannins, but there's no sediment in there. Looks pretty clear. Hasn't got any smell to it. Just trying to decide whether it's worth tasting a little bit. Cause it's going to be quite a while before I get a fire going. Like, I don't even know if I can get a fire. I didn't bring any fire starting device. So I'm hoping I can come across um, some grass tree spikes up there and yeah, do some friction fire. But that could be a while off, eh? So look, I might have a little taste. Um, I feel like we are in a pretty pristine catchment just here. Um, there's no sort of farm, oh, just heard something move. There's no farmlands or anything around here. and. I don't think I've got anything to worry about in terms of like big feral animals polluting the waterway, so I might have a little taste. Doesn't taste too bad. Oh man. I definitely needed that. My mouth is like so dry. Alright, well, I think I should tie me over for a little bit. We'll see if we can get a fire going soon and try and bottle this up. Just saw another red belly just down there. Oh, I can see him slithering away. Oh man, there are snakes everywhere around here. Bloody hell. So there's another red belly just in this little debris just down there. Right where I was about to walk. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get past him. Oh man, so sketchy. They're absolutely everywhere at the moment. Alright, so we've got some bush tucker here. 
So all this stuff they see around me, this is called samphire. And samphire grows in these kind of like marshy areas around sort of lakes and lagoons. And it's edible raw. It's just got a, quite a sort of juicy, um, fleshy taste to it. Slightly salty, so they do suggest um, if you're going to eat like large coins of it, then to soak it into like an icy um, water just to sort of try and leach out some of that salt. Um, or you can also pickle it as well from what I've read. But it's a pretty tasty bit of bush tucker. They go well in salads and things like that as well. This is the first thing I've had since I breakfast, so it's going down pretty well. So this tree just here, this is called a creek sandpaper fig. And it obviously gets its name because the leaves, they feel like sandpaper. Now unfortunately this doesn't have any fruit on it, but it grows these little figs. Yeah, I can't see any. Oh, there we go. So it's just started to fruit now. It's still very small. Where yeah, they get probably about maybe about two centimeters or so. And uh, you haven't got a whole lot of flavor, but you get a fair few on the tree. So it is a handy bit of bush tucker to know. Uh, we've got some more bush tucker. So this is native celery. And you can tell by the tiny little white flowers and the leaves are pretty distinctive as well. And uh, this is edible as well. Um, you can, if you crush the leaves, they smell like celery. So it's a pretty good indication. So all this ground cover, this is all that native celery. And just goes to show like you could be walking straight on top of this just thinking it's like grass and it's not till you actually start to learn about bush tucker that you realize all this stuff is useful. So yeah, it's one of the things I love about getting into bush tucker is it really makes you look at the bush in a whole different light. Alright, so there's quite a few plants growing here. This one's called scurvy weed. And it obviously got its name because when the first settlers came to Australia, they were suffering scurvy, so they used this to try and combat it. Um, you can also yeah, sort of identify it by it's a really beautiful little uh, sort of purpley blue flowers. Alright, so just behind the lake's edge, just here, you've got a little bit of a gully. And this is where you're just going to have bush tucker galore. And uh, straight away, I can see a native passion fruit vine. If you have a closer look, you can see all the passion fruits just hanging there. So just like uh, other passion fruits, it's got a really pretty flower, which is quite distinctive. Now we just take it off the, the vine. Now apparently these are ripe when they start to feel soft and also when the stem starts to shrivel. You can see it start to shrivel a little bit but I still think it's a little bit too early in the season for it, but let's break one open. Yeah, so there you go. Looks just like passion fruit. And I still think it's uh, a little bit too early. Let me give it a little bit of a taste. No, <laughs> definitely not ripe. So apparently the unripened fruit is poisonous, so don't do what I just did. Um, you've got to wait till they turn soft and also when the stem starts to shrivel a bit more. So I reckon in another couple of weeks I'll be right, but at the moment they're definitely not. <laughs> Man, there is bush tucker absolutely everywhere. Everywhere I look, there's a new plant. <laughs> so this one uh, right here, this one I've shown you guys a few times before. This is called Warrigal Greens or bush spinach. And uh, once again, uh, when the early settlers came to Australia, they sort of used this to try and combat scurvy. So it's edible raw, although it does have um, um, oxalates in it. So it is uh, suggested to sort of blanch it to try and yeah, remove some of those oxalates. But you can eat a small amount raw, but just um, if you're going to start eating lots, lots of it, then I'd probably suggest um, blanching it first. It's really nice, eh? Hey? It's honestly like a really good substitute for just normal spinach. Like if you put this in pastas, in salads, and all those kinds of things, it's a really good plant for that. Oh, I'd recommend going for the sort of younger leaves, not the bigger ones. The big ones tend to be a little bit bitter, um, but the smaller ones are good. All right, well, we can't go past the good old spiny-headed mat rush, a little mandrel on folia. I've shown you guys this a bunch of times before, but if you pull out one of the leaves um, from the center of the plant, there we go. So that white portion, that's edible. It also gets these seeds. Uh, it doesn't have many at, any at the moment, but has these like little green seeds uh, during summer, and they're actually quite tasty. They kind of got a nutty flavor to them. They'll eventually harden, and then you can process that down into a flower to create like a damper.
Right, so we've got this reed just here. Well, I, th I think it's a reed. Um, but I think I might use this um, for the bedding for tonight because it's got a quite a nice texture, so I think it'll be good to sleep on. So I'm just going to cut some of these away. I'm not going to take all of it because once again I don't want to sort of damage just one particular plant. But I'll go through this area and um, yeah, collect some more. I'm just going to try and clear as much of the leaf debris and stuff as I can because that tends to be where sort of spiders and little ants and stuff like to hide out. So if I try and give it as much of that as I can, then we'll pop this down on top. Now what I'd like to put down is some bracken fern, but surprisingly there's none around here, which is really strange. This kind of bushland, there's usually bracken fern bloody everywhere, but I haven't seen any. All right, let's give it a go. And that feels so good to lie down. It's actually not too bad though. Time will tell <laughs> to see whether it's a success or not. It's definitely gonna be a very interesting night. And also I can hear some thunder in the distance as well. So there's no forecast of um, yeah, any thunder or yeah, rain or anything tonight so I don't know what it's doing but hopefully it blows over because otherwise it's going to be a pretty rough night. Um, but it's about 6.30, I've got about two hours till it gets dark. We still got to try and get a fire going so I can boil that water. Now I have seen a few grass trees growing around here but I haven't seen any with a flower spike so we're going to have to go for a bit of a wander and uh, hopefully we can find a, a flower spike because that's our only hope of getting, getting some friction fire. So, yeah, fingers crossed we can come across one. Oh, <laughs> you little ripper. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So this thing is called a grass tree or a xanthoria. Quite often you'll see the species of xanthorias where they grow a big black trunk. Um, but the species around this area, they um, don't grow the trunk, they sort of just stay underneath the ground. But what we're after is that stick that's coming out the top of it. So that's its flower spike. And it'll shoot this thing, um, it'll shoot this up particularly after bushfires. Um, and then at the top of the flower spike, that's where you get all the flowers. And if you just um, run your finger down the flowers, they're little white flowers full of nectar and it's really tasty. And then that, that'll go to seed and I'm pretty sure you can also eat the seed of that as well. But anyway, what we're after is this, um, yeah, this stick here, because that is what we're gonna use to um, do friction fire to get the you know, fire started. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. I honestly thought I was going to have to go wandering for ages to try and find one of these, so pretty stoked with that. I swear, I think I've walked through about a thousand spider webs. Absolutely everywhere. So I was struggling a little bit to try and find some tinder. Um, surprisingly, I thought a lot of the, the mat rush around here would have a lot of dead fronds, but not many of them did, so pretty much all I could find. So we should be able to create a little bird's nest with this though. So just gonna rough that up until we get like a sort of cotton wool texture. All right, so I'm just making a little bearing block. So I've just uh, split a piece of wood. I'm just gonna create a little divot for the spindle to sit into. Because I didn't bring any cordage, I want to do a bow drill. I'm going to use my shoelace. Yeah, right now we're just burning the hole. This might actually work. This timber seems a uh, good density. Sometimes xanthoria spikes can be a little bit pithy. This one seems to be pretty good. I'm just going to create the notch. 
So you can put a few grains of sand just to help with the friction. So I've got my tinder bundle ready as well. Alright. Wish me luck. Alright, well I think we've got an ember. Yep, there we go. So you don't want to rush this part, you just want to let that ember build. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'm so stoked. Burn, baby, burn. Honestly, <laughs> I don't think I've ever been more stoked to get a fire. I really need this fire. I really need to boil that water just to be safe. That is a good feeling. Trust the old shoelace, eh? Never lets you down. Well, you wouldn't body believe it, but uh, the memory card's full. As I was taking the water off the fire, I got a pop up on the screen saying it was full. So I've just deleted some files. I've um, freed up a little bit of space, but not a whole lot. So I'm going to have to be pretty conservative um, with what I film now. Unfortunately, I didn't bring another memory card, which was silly of me. So yeah, I just have to yeah, kind of pick and choose what I film, which is pretty frustrating. But to be honest, I've kind of done everything that I wanted to do anyway. I've got the fire going, I've got my shoulder set up. Um, I'm not cooking any food because I didn't catch any food. I've got some bush tucker um, just beside me, but yeah, that's about it. So probably as good a time as any, I reckon. Then maybe just for me to sit back and enjoy the space and yeah, appreciate what I've done. <laughs> There are so many creepy crawlies around here. I just saw a giant centipede. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> Guys, this is gonna be a very long night. See you in the morning. That was a tough night's sleep. That was up there, one of the, the worst sleeps I've ever had. <laughs> it was pretty cold and uh, just very uncomfortable. Like my hips are so sore. Oh. At least this kept the mozzies away, which is uh, the main thing. Still a few little creepy crawlies coming in underneath, but nothing too bad. Oh, that was rough. <laughs> I don't think I got a whole lot of sleep, eh? There's also a few big animals um, walking around me last night. I heard a few kangaroos and I'm pretty sure I heard an emu come up to camp. Like, honestly, I'm pretty sure it came right up to the dirt here. It didn't sound like a, a um, wallaby or a kangaroo. It sounded like it was walking, like an emu. It sounded big as well. <laughs> oh, man. That was rough. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> it's 
So anyone up for some brekkie? On the menu this morning, we got some uh, samphire, we got some scurvy weed, and some warrigal greens. It's not quite bacon and eggs, but <laughs> it will do. We'll do for now at least. Not gonna lie, I'm gonna absolutely murder a good burger and chips on the way home. All right, well that fire is well and truly out. Man, what an absolute stunner. She is bloody gorgeous today. That's about time we yeah, wrap this one up. So as always, I want to say massive thanks to all you guys watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little uh, challenge. No food, no water, and no um, yeah, shelter. It's uh, pretty rough, but uh, it's really good to get out here and sort of test the skills. So uh, keen to try and do a few more in the future. So anyway, hope you guys have a good one. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hooroo.